Hey everybody, so I get a lot of questions from people across my various social media platforms. Some of those questions are nice, but a lot of them aren't. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Must be stupid. I usually don't reply to those kinds of questions because I don't think it will be productive. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. I don't have time to waste arguing with every asshole on the planet. And but which ones are assholes? Well, all of them are. A lot of the time, I don't think they genuinely want to know an answer. Like one of the questions I still get all the time is how can you be a girl and non-binary? I get this question so much, in fact, that I made a whole video about it. Sometimes people asking this question are genuinely confused and just looking for clarification. And that's totally cool. But other times people are just trying to have a gotcha moment where they expose my feminist hypocrisy. Well, now you're a man. Like, if you ask me how I can be non-binary and a girl, and then I go to your profile and your last 10 tweets, are you ranting about how there are only two genders and non-binary people don't exist? Now you're a man, a man, a man. Please stay tuned for important information. I know you're not genuinely wondering how I'm non-binary and a girl because you don't even think I'm non-binary. <laughs> People like that often just want to fight. They want attention and they think that by posing a question in a semi-innocent way that they'll get me to respond and get sucked into a whole debate with them. Oh hey! So most of the time I ignore those questions, but that doesn't mean they're entirely not worth discussing. So I want to make some videos addressing rude questions that people ask me. Maybe these questions are asked maliciously, maybe not. I really don't know people's intent behind their questions. But that being said, uh, are you um, out of your freaking mind? This isn't about the individual who's asking the question. This is about the question itself. Hopefully I can use my channel to talk about these things in general and clear up some misconceptions for people. Okay. So the first one that I want to start with is about the difference between gender identity and gender expression. Gender identity. A person's perception of having a particular gender, which may or may not correspond with their birth sex. Gender expression. The way in which a person expresses their gender identity, typically through their appearance, dress, and behavior. I think it's possible for a trans woman to have a beard and still be a trans woman. I also think it's possible for a trans man to wear makeup and still be a trans man. However, I brought this up recently online and someone asked me basically if they really had gender dysphoria, why would they present like that? They didn't ask it that politely, but that was the gist of it. So there are a few aspects to this that we need to go through. The first part is that gender dysphoria and transgender are not synonyms. Gender dysphoria is the condition of feeling one's emotional and psychological identity as male or female to be opposite of one's biological sex. Transgender is denoting or relating to a person whose sense of personal identity and gender does not correspond with their birth sex. Many trans people experience gender dysphoria, but not all of them. Being transgender is when your gender identity, your internal sense of your gender, is not the same as the gender you were assigned at birth. First, they don't assign a gender. They record your sex at birth. A gender is the state of being male or female typically used with reference to social and cultural differences rather than biological ones. Sex, chiefly with reference to people, sexual activity including specifically sexual intercourse, either of the two main categories, male and female, into which humans and many other living things are divided on the basis of their reproductive functions. Black and white. I'll give you an extra second to read it. There it is. So if you were assigned male at birth, but now you identify as a woman, you're a transgender woman. And vice versa for trans men. Woman. An adult human female. Trans woman. A male to female transsexual. The definition for a transgender woman a trans woman, sometimes trans woman or trans woman, is a woman who was assigned male at birth. The label of transgender woman is not always interchangeable with that of transsexual woman, although the two labels are often used in this manner. 
Gender dysphoria is a feeling of distress associated with gendered aspects of your life. It can be broken down into two main categories, body dysphoria and social dysphoria. Body dysphoria for trans women can be things like strongly disliking the masculine features of your body, wanting to have breasts, not wanting to have a penis, stuff like that. Introducing the PP pee -pee Choppers. Body dysphoria for trans men can be like strongly disliking the feminine features of your body, not wanting to have breasts, and wanting to have a penis. And even some non-binary or genderqueer people experience body dysphoria, usually in the form of wanting to appear more androgynous. Androgynous. Partly male and partly female in appearance of indeterminate sex. Riley, that's your word, right there. That picture almost even looks like you. Social dysphoria is things like having discomfort hearing your birth name, disliking the pronouns of the sex you were assigned at birth used to refer to you. Dis You're a stupid dumbass. Disliking using the bathroom of the sex you were assigned at birth. Or I'll just go in the girl's bathroom instead. Disliking when people perceive you as the sex you were assigned at birth. So now you're a male! A male! Some trans people experience more body dysphoria than social dysphoria, and some trans people experience more social dysphoria than body dysphoria. But they're still both forms of gender dysphoria. And trans people even experience these things to varying degrees. It's not like an on-off switch where you either completely have gender dysphoria or you don't have it at all. You could have severe dysphoria, medium dysphoria, mild dysphoria, or even no dysphoria. <laughs> Because it is possible to feel a genuine connection to a gender that's different than the one you were assigned at birth. When you are born, they observe and record your sex, not your gender. Your biological sex is recorded at birth without necessarily feeling significant discomfort around gendered aspects of your life. Like, feeling that your gender is a certain way isn't necessarily the same as having a strong distress towards certain aspects of your body or the way people perceive or refer to you. Plus, the amount of dysphoria that you feel can fluctuate over time, especially throughout someone's transition. Now, I've seen a couple of these articles, so I went looking for them and I couldn't find the ones I originally saw, but I found one on a site called Slate.com, which starts out like this. Should a boy who grows out his hair, likes to wear pink, and prefers to jump rope at recess rather than play football be raised as a girl instead of a boy? Several recent pieces in prominent media outlets would have us believe that this is a major issue in North America. In the latest such piece, the transgender battle line, Childhood, an op-ed that appeared in the Wall Street Journal on January 4th, doctoral student of sexual neuroscience Deborah So raises alarm that many feminine boys and masculine girls are being encouraged by their parents and therapists to undergo social transitions, changing their name and pronouns to live full-time in the other gender. So characterizes these transitions as premature and in contradiction with established research, citing studies showing that most children who are gender non-conforming do not grow up to be transgender adults if that's something they decide to do. Like, the reason that a lot of trans people have surgeries or take hormones is to alleviate some of that gender dysphoria. And is to alleviate some of that gender dysphoria. And is to alleviate some of that gender dysphoria. And so the changes that can happen to a trans person mentally and physically during their transition can oftentimes reduce the amount or severity of their gender dysphoria. Isn't that the point, Riley? Is to alleviate their dysphoria by making themselves comfortable with who they are? So, all of that being said, let's think about a couple of hypothetical examples of trans people for our original question. Why would a trans woman have a beard? Well, maybe she doesn't have gender dysphoria around her beard. Maybe she experiences body dysphoria about other parts of her, just not centered around her beard. Maybe she feels a lot of social dysphoria, but not so much body dysphoria. Or maybe she just has mild gender dysphoria or none at all. Or maybe it's not a she. Maybe it's a furry. Maybe it's another kin. Why are you labeling people, Riley? Aren't you the one opposed to labeling people? Those are all possibilities. And I'd say the same thing could be possible for a trans man wearing makeup. Maybe he just doesn't have dysphoria at all. Maybe his dysphoria is mild. Or maybe he just feels dysphoria in other aspects of his life that aren't makeup. Maybe it's just a cross-dresser. Maybe they just like makeup. Maybe they have a really big zit they're trying to cover up. So that's all definitely possible, but let's say we have two stereotypical trans people who experience very severe gender dysphoria. One is a trans woman, and one is a trans man. Why would the trans woman have a beard? I can think of a few reasons. Maybe. Maybe she shaves so often that it irritates her skin, and she wanted to take a break to give her skin some time to rest. Maybe. 
Maybe she knows that she has an event coming up in a few days, so she wants to let her beard grow out before the event and shave right beforehand to get the closest shave possible. Maybe. Maybe her beard grows super fast and she did shave this morning, but because it's already late in the evening, she's starting to have some five o'clock shadow appear. Maybe. Maybe she can't afford razors and shaving cream right now. Maybe. Maybe she woke up late and didn't have time to shave. Maybe. Maybe she's having laser hair removal done and they told her not to shave for a week after the treatment. Maybe. Maybe she gets really bad ingrown hairs that are super painful every time she shaves. That's everything I can think of, but maybe. But I'm sure there are more reasons. The thing is, this hypothetical trans woman would still be a trans woman even if she had a beard. The appearance of a beard doesn't automatically invalidate your gender. If a cisgender woman has a beard because of a medical condition like PCOS, she is still a woman. Facial hair isn't the one great determiner of gender. Now let's talk about the hypothetical trans man who experiences severe gender dysphoria. Why would he wear makeup? Maybe. maybe. Maybe after years and years of applying it regularly before coming out, he got used to the habit and enjoys it. Maybe. Maybe he wants to be a male makeup artist and looks up to a bunch of male makeup artists as his inspiration. Maybe. Maybe he works in the TV and film industry where every guy wears makeup. Maybe. Maybe he has severe acne and uses the makeup to hide his acne scars. Maybe. Maybe it hasn't been safe for him to come out yet, so he hasn't started medically transitioning, which means he has to wear makeup as a part of his company's dress code because they think he's a girl. Maybe. I'm sure there are a lot of possible reasons for this trans guy to wear makeup. Cis men can wear makeup too, and they're still men. Putting makeup on your face doesn't turn you into a girl, whether you're cis or trans. And and honestly, you don't know what someone is going through. Maybe that trans woman with a beard is comfortable with her beard and enjoys presenting like that. Or maybe again- Maybe that'll be the end of my video today. I've had enough of the maybes. Maybe. 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 Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my social media. Later. Maybe that trans man loves rocking makeup, or- Hey, I'm the Numbskull. You can find my work on YouTube, Vidme, and on Patreon. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, subscribe, like, and let me know where I can improve.